Thank you. And oh, is this one? Yeah, this one's fine. Uh, yeah, so hello, my name's Clementine. I'm a PhD student uh, at the University of Sydney, and uh, most of the time I'm in the lab, I'm a synthetic chemist. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about breaking good and organic chemistry as an education focused citizen science project. Um, Um, so first I'd just like to acknowledge um, that we work on land that has never been ceded and um, the work that we do is on the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation um, and we're very privileged as well to be here today on the lands of the Kabi Kabi and Jinjibara peoples. Um, so I'll start off by telling you about what Breaking Good is. Uh, this is actually kind of an umbrella project. We have a couple of different things going on under the title Breaking Good. Um, you might have already heard from Jen Fermer today about essential medicines. Um, but what I work on are the synthetic workshops. So these are drug discovery workshops in which we get school and university students to participate in drug discovery citizen science. So in the past, we have worked with open source malaria um, to try and find cures uh, for malaria. Uh, currently, we work with open source mycetoma. So mycetoma is a disease you've probably never heard of. It typically affects people in low income countries. So it's considered a neglected tropical disease. There's not a lot of work, um, not a lot of research into finding cures for it. It's caused by, actually, it's actually caused by a couple of different fungi, um, but the one of the most common causes is a fungus called M. mycetomatis, and it can lead to the destruction of muscle and bone in the affected areas. So it's quite a nasty disease. We don't have any good treatments for it at the moment. So it's really important that we find new antifungals. So the drug discovery process uh, is very complicated and I will not be going into it in depth here, but one of the ways we do it uh, is we make a lot of different chemical compounds. We screen them against a pathogen. So we see if they can kill that pathogen, pathogen successfully. And um, so in our case for mycetoma, that's that fungus and mycetomatis. Um, each time that we test a compound against it, even if it doesn't work necessarily, it will still tell us information about what does and doesn't work. Um, but to be able to screen all of those compounds, somebody needs to make them in the first place. Uh, and so that is the synthetic chemistry that I typically do and that we do in these projects. So why make this project education focused? Um, if you came to our symposium earlier, you will already know the answer to that. Um, but basically, in schools, it can be really difficult to do authentic research or authentic experiments. Um, a lot of the time, students are doing um, experimental work that they can technically just Google the answers to if they wanted to. Um, citizen science, though, makes it possible for students to do really cool, interesting research that's actually genuine science that will tell us something new that we didn't know before. Um, and this is really important because we are seeing an increasing number of studies um, showing us that seeing real world applications of the abstract concepts that they're learning in the classroom can really help students to understand those concepts and having a common goal. So like working on a project that is going to benefit your community or science in general um, is a really powerful motivator for student learning as well. So that's why we wanted to make it education focused. Uh, unfortunately, citizen science and synthetic chemistry doesn't really pair too well together, um, at least not, not historically. And uh, so to come up with the kind of projects that synthetic chemistry requires, you need to know a lot of background knowledge. You need to know how drug discovery works. You need to know how to make new compounds. Um, and this can be a really high barrier to entry. Um, then of course, using chemicals um, often has a lot of risks and hazards involved there. Um, lots of chemicals are very dangerous to handle. And even if you can find some chemicals that are relatively, relatively safe to use, um, the equipment and the reagents and things that you need to buy um, are often very expensive and in inaccessible because of that. So what we are doing with Breaking Good is we are working with researchers and educators to try and make it possible to do synthetic chemistry as a citizen science project. And um, so our team uh, currently has both researchers and educators on it. We're very lucky. Um, and what researchers do for us is they help us to identify the targets that will be appropriate for students to work on, but still be something that actually contributes to science and is, is relevant. And they help us to prepare chemicals that might be required if it's not something that you can just 
buy off the shelf. Um, and then they actually do the testing of the compounds. Um, so we have some lovely collaborators in Europe that we send our compounds to and they, they tell us the results of that. And educators uh, provide the educational structures that we can put these projects in. So for instance, um, it can be part of a year 12 course or a university course. And then really crucially, they provide basically all of the learning background, all of the context and important information that students need. So for us to show them you know, some really cool chemistry in a drug discovery process, they do still need to have that background knowledge of basic chemical concepts. And that's what the teachers are doing day in, day out. So the idea behind Breaking Good is that by combining these two um, groups and working really closely, we can create an experience for students that is authentic and innovative, but still really safe as well. So um, we have actually done this with universities as well, but I'll just talk about our high school workshops today. Um, so we get our students to come into the university labs. Um, while they're there, they learn about drug discovery, about um, organic chemistry and open science. And they get to set up an experiment in a lab setting with lab coats and lab glasses, just like a normal researcher would do. And they learn about the different techniques that we would use to analyze things in the lab and they actually get to have a chance at using those techniques themselves on the experiment that they did earlier. And we currently run this as two full day workshops. So one in the lab at the university and the other one in the school. So an incursion rather than an excursion. And um, the students only do one experiment, um, even though typically this process would require three um, just because we don't have the time, but they get to do the final and most interesting experiment. Um, and we've been doing it with year 11 and 12 students. And part of that is because we have designed this project to fulfill the requirements of a depth study. <laughs> so a depth study, if you don't know what it is, uh, is a relatively new um, introduction to the New South Wales curriculum particularly. Um, so it's required by all science subjects in stage six, so that's year 11 and 12. And it requires students to spend 15 hours of class time um, demonstrating on, well, focusing on demonstrating the skills in those uh, nice colorful circles there. So the two in purple are mandatory for every depth study. And so that's questioning and predicting and communicating science. And then students also have to demonstrate any two of the remaining five green circles up there, which is planning and conducting investigations, uh, processing and analyzing data and problem solving. Uh, and what we've heard from teachers is that it can be quite difficult to come up with and implement um, projects that are actually engaging and interesting for students, but still fulfill all the requirements um, of, that, that, uh, of the curriculum. So with our Breaking Good workshop, um, as I mentioned, it is across two days. It covers about 12 hours. And um, so to fill in those other, other three or so hours, we provide teachers with pre-work so they can do this um, in their own, you know, their, their lesson time rather than having to have a full day set aside for it. Um, and the idea of the pre-work is also that it has a little bit of flexibility so teachers can focus a bit more on one part if they'd like or um, focus on another area if students haven't gotten up to that um, other parts yet. Uh, when the students come in to the university or when we go to their schools, we provide them with lots of worksheets and essentially lab manuals that have activities and questions for them to answer. And at the moment, we have left assessment as something that is just completely determined by the teachers, because again, this gives them more flexibility to organize whatever suits their school better. And um, we would like to make some suggestions about how um, it could be assessed, um, because that's something teachers have mentioned that would, would be useful to them. Uh, we haven't gotten around to that just yet. <laughs> And in our most recent high school workshop, which we ran in June of this year, we had 174 student participants from two different schools. And we synthesized 12 compounds. So basically every little group of vials that you can see up there is a separate new chemical that didn't exist before and will be sent off or has been sent off um, to be tested against that fungus. And we got really good feedback from both of the schools. And um, most of it was about how engaged and interested the students were and how exciting they found it um, to work on something that was actual science and not just, you know, something their teacher had found online and printed out. Uh, and a couple of teachers mentioned that it really improved students' confidence as well, which was really exciting for us to hear because we would love to, you know, make all of our, um, encourage all of our students to become chemists.
So, a few challenges of this work, uh, common to most citizen science projects, I think. So the sustainability of this um, project is a big one for us because we have to keep coming up with compounds that are safe for students to make, but still relevant to a drug discovery project, and that can be quite difficult. Um, scaling it up is definitely an issue. Firstly, we need to find those compounds that are going to be appropriate. Um, just logistically, it's quite difficult to have you know, hundreds of students coming into a university and trying to figure out when you can time it, that it's not going to interfere with university semesters or school holidays, that kind of thing. And of course, funding. And the more students you have, the more lab assistants and so forth you need to pay, the more chemicals you need to buy. And we've been lucky enough to be funded by the Drug Discovery Institute at the University of Sydney so far. Um, but going forward and, and scaling up, um, we can't necessarily rely on that, so we do need to find some options. Um, and yeah, so I'd just like to uh, thank the people involved in this. So my two supervisors, Professor Peter Rutledge and Associate Professor Alice Motion and their beautiful research groups. And um, Dr. Kimberly Scroggy, who now works at the CSIRO, um, did a lot of this work as well, setting up this project. Um, but I'd also really like to thank all of the teachers, students, and all of the lab assistants and demonstrators that worked on this, um, because it's, it's a really cool project and we simply could not do it without everyone involved. Thank you. It is a very cool project. And, um, to have students engage authentically and get into university labs. How exciting is that? Do we have some questions? Thank you. It just sounds so amazing. Uh, I mean, coming in from Queensland, obviously, it's a little bit different. And it would be interesting to see maybe how we could translate that into a Queensland setting because uh, the, the curriculum is set up a little bit differently and students in year 12 don't do any organic chemistry until sort of unit four so they aren't doing their student projects and it's a little bit different to a depth study but it'd be really really cool I don't know whether down the track looking at even you know translating that into sort of a Queensland context would be really interesting to see do you have partnerships with other universities or is that something that's sort of looking to develop maybe? Uh, yeah, at the moment we don't have any partnerships. We'd certainly love to share it with other universities. Um, as far as like, I mean, it's easy for us to say. The process that we went through to make it a depth study, um, there's no reason why we can't do that with a different school curriculum. Um, so. We hope that it'll be quite transferable and easy to slot into various curricula. And um, there are obviously, you know, the same kind of points in the Queensland and New South Wales curriculum, even if you don't have the same depth study. Hey, um, you mentioned that you do this at uni as well as in high school. I was just wondering what are the differences in the programs that you designed for high school versus uni curricula? Yeah, uh, so we, the Mycetoma project has been running for I think three years, but the, the concept of the synthetic workshops has been going for I think six years in the, the first year labs at UCID. Um, so the main difference is the amount of time that the students have. So instead of doing two really full-on workshops, they do um, six weeks of lab classes, so it's integrated into their, their normal lab class. At the moment, we do only offer it to the, uh, the advanced cohort of chemistry, um, because of course, first years often don't have a lot of lab skills and et cetera. Um, but the, the main difference in what the students do is that, as I mentioned, in the high school workshops, they only do one of three experiments, and in the university setting, we do all three experiments and the, the students like see it through across the across the weeks and you know experience the joys of having something not work in the first week and then having to deal with that the next week. Yes. Not so much a question as just a thank you. It's great, and why wasn't it around when I was at school? This is exactly what I want to know. <laughs> and chemistry nerds just 
she's been nourished, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, we um, I was very very proud because we had a lot of um the teachers like like they, you know, hung out while we were doing the workshop, and a lot of them said the same kind of thing. So that was nice. <laughs> Further questions. Right at the back. Hi, thanks, Lewis. Um, so I was curious, have you seen any changes then, like behavioral changes or attitude changes towards the students that you've already run the workshops with? And has it been a really positive success? Like they're all nerding out now and um, so one of the things that we have not yet done, mostly due to the arduous process of ethics, is kind of formally assess this. So we are working on that. Um, at the moment, it's all kind of a anecdotal. Um, it has been very positive so far, but we are aware that we have we we've been running it with schools that um, are like selective schools some of the time, so they have already have lots of high achieving and engaged students. Um, so we would be really keen to run it with schools that don't necessarily have the most engaged chemistry cohorts and see if we're seeing the same kind of differences there. Yeah, we, we were talking about that the other day, actually, the, the, the moving middle group. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's where you get to see a lot of the impact happening. Um, so yeah, that's a good, a good thing to be able to focus on. Thank you so much, Clementine. We really appreciated your...